and I will ask my uh, first panelist uh, to come on the uh, podium and uh, make this presentation, Captain Ar Anajit Kachor. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Trevor Pereira and my time standards, thank you for this opportunity to speak to you about how the flag state, especially the Marshall Island Registry, is taking on and uh, supporting the maritime industry and the various stakeholders in the maritime industry. So basically, what is a flag state and what does the flag state really do? So flag state rules and regulations stem out of the IMO conventions from the UNCLOS convention. And you can see over here in just a few lines, it says a lot, which translates actually into a lot of uh, and a lot of rules, regulations, not just for the ships, but also for the administrations and the uh, management companies. Now, the flag administration also attends all or many of the, most of the meetings at the IMO, uh, works with the various committees to try and make life easier for and more the implementation to be easier for the ship managers and the ship operators and the ship owners. And not many people really know that the ship registry actually works with a lot of stakeholders in the maritime industry, or almost all the stakeholders, as you can see over here. It's the port trade control, the ship owners, the ship builders, just about everyone. Now that you know something about the registry, what we deal with, you really need to cut a ship registers. So what do you really need to know about a registry before you actually go and register a ship with the registry? So do you really look only the cost of registration or do you look at anything else? So let's have a look a little bit more into this. If you look at just the cost, your cost can quite easily fade away with one, just one detention. And if you're really looking at uh, the cost between the various registries, uh, oh, if you average it over a period of time, it's basically very little difference between the uh, costs that you'll be paying to any of the registries. So you really should be looking more at the reputation of the registry rather than just the cost of registration. How the registry is actually going to be uh, focusing with you, how they're going to be interacting with you, what are you really going to get back from the registry? It's not just what you're paying, but what, are you, what value are you getting back from that? Again, are you able to register a ship just sitting across the table with people who are able to take decisions in your own time zone, or are you going to be talking to somebody in the other part of the world? Similarly, you may get finance, and then you want to record mortgages. So are you able to record mortgages immediately and get immediate uh, evidence of mortgage recordings? Or are you going to wait, or are you going to have some temporary signatures and sent across to the other side of the world or any, any other places? Now, once you've got a ship registered, how is the registry going to support you? Your sh ships are going to be calling all over the world. So does the registry have offices around the world with people who are able to take decisions in those offices to support you? So would you be able to get support from the registry 24-7, 365? Or do you have to wait over the weekend for getting some sort of a dispensation or uh, the service extension or some sort of a support if you have an issue with the vessel? You can't just keep having the ship waiting in the port. Similarly, it's also important to know how the, how the registry is keeping pace with the modern technology and how it is uh, keeping, uh, advancing its, uh, enhancing its uh, capabilities. Are you able to record mortgages over a video call? Do you, does the registry accept digital signatures or in the electronic signatures? Do you have access to registry uh, rules and regulations at your fingertips, on your mobile phones even? Are you able to get verification of the say, various certificates issued, whether it's to the seafarers or to the ship? Can you verify authenticity of the certificates online? That's important for you to be uh, supported. Similarly, has the registry actually 
ratified all the relevant conventions applicable to your ships. That's important for you to know and to support the ship. Also, let's have a look as to how the registry is actually overseeing itself as well as the various uh, oversight of the various classification societies, overseeing itself, whether they do an assessment of themselves, or risk assessment on themselves, on the vessels, on the operators, how they carry out the annual safety inspections. A every registry does its annual safety inspection, but do they actually carry out the inspections? Do you actually, you've actually paid for those inspections. Do you actually get any value back from those inspections, or is it just a paper exercise? These are some of the things that you should be keeping in mind. Also, what is the reputation of the company? How well are the, is the registry actually doing? You can see over here, there are only 23 flag administrations which are on the Qualship 21 program. And you can see one of the registries being on the list for the last 19 years on the Qualship 21 approved list. Some of the other registries have not been on the list at all. Some have come on and gone off. So if your ship is actually going to a US port, you're gonna lose out on the advantages of the Qualship 21 certification. Similarly, is the registry on the white list of all the post trade control MOUs? And if it is on the white list, how well is it performing? You can see some of the, uh, one of the registries over here. You can see my, our registry, the Marshall Islands, is re relevantly doing better than most of the other registries or bigger registries. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the Marshall Island registry for you. A registry of commitment and quality and that's what you get from experienced personnel worldwide, exceptional support services, and an infrastructure that you can rely upon. Thank you.